Welcome back to Fast Market here on the TD Ameritrade Network. I'm Tom White, joined by my co-host Kevin Hanks. But let's bring in our next guest for a cash tag segment. That's going to be Landon Swan, the co-founder of Likefolio. Welcome back to the show, Landon. Thank you, Tom. It's good to be here. All right. So uh, I'm, I'm curious, Landon. This stock's down about 10 percent after releasing November um, numbers. This is one of the few retailers that gives us those mo monthly metrics. Same store sales, not in the double digit territory anymore. Is the king dead here, Landon, according to uh, your data at Lightfolio? Yeah, if you look at September numbers, they were plus 10% year over year. October's plus 8% year over year. November's plus 6% year over year. Uh, you know, I mean, my, my first grader could figure out that pattern. It's not good. <laughs> right. And uh, it, investors don't like to hear that. And I'll tell you what, I don't like to hear it as a, as a trader, as a like folio trader. This is one of my least favorite companies because I hate that they release these monthly numbers. Uh, we've got a very slightly bearish score on them, pretty much neutral, but a little bit leaning bearish. And, you know, they, they kind of take our edge away when they release these numbers early. Uh, so really, the only thing you have to trade on is the last month. And so I think that's what's important to look at. Um, when we look at how, how things are looking for this company, uh, one of the metrics we look at is how membership's looking. Are they getting more members? Obviously, more members are going to be more sales. They get that recurring model coming in. That's good, for, uh, that's good for business, of course. And that's actually not looking terrible. It's plus 9% year over year. It was on a much better uptrend if you go back a few years, and it's kind of stalled out a little bit. But we are up slightly on a year over year basis when it's people talking about uh, new memberships. And one of the reasons I think is that um, people are looking to buy in bulk more. I mean, that is a uh, that's a big thing that you know we're, we're seeing talk, talking about about plus 14 percent year over year inflation concerns food price concerns are triple digits year over year uh, deal discovery and buying in bulk are double digits i mean people are really trying to stretch those dollars further they're feeling the pain um, and costco is one of those you know places that can relieve the pain now when you look at the purchase intent on Costco, it's actually down um, fairly significantly on a year-over-year -year basis. When you compare it to sort of Target, Walmart, um, even if you kind of throw in BJ's or Amazon, which are uh, you know more fringe competitors, they're the worst of the group. Costco's the worst of the group, but they're the best when it comes to happiness. We've got a, a bit of a mixed bag when it comes to the data, and that's why we aren't definitively bearish on this company right now. We're only at about a negative 15, which if you guys remember, negative 20 is kind of the threshold for being uh, pretty solidly bearish. And as you guys mentioned, I mean, they're off 10% in a week. That's That always is tough to trade into because the, obviously the expectations have been lowered by these November numbers significantly. Uh, and so when they come out and report earnings, um, you know, its expectations are already pretty low, so it's just a matter of whether or not those expectations are confirmed or maybe shook, uh, shook up a little bit. So uh, the good news, I, I would say, with this company is that, uh, you know, Kirkland, their, their private brand is doing really well. Strong numbers, purchase intent, year-over-year -year growth of about 24 percent. Positive uh, ratio is about 81 percent. Very, very happy customers with this brand, and of course, the margins with that are going to be higher. So. A little bit of a mixed bag when it comes to Costco, and somewhat uh, the the cat's already out of the bag with the news about November being plus six percent. So um, it's you know it's going to be interesting going into this earnings report. And one thing to keep in mind is you know how they do last quarter. Their revenue was plus fifteen percent year over year. They beat on revenue, beat on earnings, and the stock sold off about four percent. So this is one of those sort of caveats of a company that reports every month. You have to know the difference between a normal quarterly rep reporting company and a monthly reporting company like Costco. Landon, this company sells quality goods at low prices. They, people like to buy bigger ticket items there now, slowly but surely, because their return policy is so nice and the overall basket of things you can buy at Costco keeps expanding. Now, also, they're about to raise membership fees again. It's getting very close. It's just a matter of when they do it, not if. And how about this? Black Friday, $9.1 billion in overall sales over Black Friday. That's a record for the consumer that Costco is going to be uh, partaking in as well. So this stock is almost... Tom and Landon in the oversold category. It's getting close because of the sell-off here 
from the mid 500s down to where we are about 480. So this has got so many good things going for it and it's just sold off significantly from where it was. Landon, what am I getting wrong here? Is this is this really, is Costco, the brand loyalty that they have at Costco, is it really starting to wane? I cannot believe that, Landon. <laughs> no, I, I don't think so. I mean, memberships are up, you know, 9% year over year. Are people talking yeah. about getting new memberships? If you would have asked me a week ago, two weeks ago, how we were looking on Costco, I would have said we're leaning slightly bearish. Uh, but now, just like you mentioned, it sells off 10%. You have to take that into account. I mean, you're not a good investor or a good yep. trader if you, if you have blinders on when it comes to the price. So it's the fact that it's off 10%, I think changes the, the formula a little bit. Uh, I would have been slightly bearish two weeks ago. Now I'm a little bit more in the neutral camp and I want to see what this earnings report says. I don't think it's going to be great. You know, the data that we've got shows purchase intent off, but some of that's already out there with those November sales numbers. So um, I, I really think it just comes down to how people are going to react to, you know, the membership raise um, and, uh, We'll, we'll see. I mean, I think it's really important to see how this earnings report is taken by investors. But right now, honestly, your guess is as good as mine because the fact that this sold off already on bad numbers. So we're expecting not great numbers out of this report, but I think it may already be baked in. Yeah, and they gave us a preliminary Q1 revenue uh, during that report on sales down to 53.44 billion, expected about nearly 54.95 billion. So you're seeing that slowdown. Uh, but Landon, you know, when you when you look at that deterioration in some of the numbers, is part of this going to be comps, and is the other part going to be the fact that you know you used to go into Costco to pick up a few things, right, and then come out spending 500 bucks and have a cart full of crap you didn't probably need? Is that probably due to inflationary pressures where pricing power is going down for the consumer a little bit, where they're paying a little bit more because inflationary pressures, but maybe they're not buying as many products? Right. I mean, they've got those giant carts for a reason. That's their game plan. Get you in the door and get you out with a filled up cart. Um, it's kind of like the, the the big version of a five below, right? You go in <laughs> not sure what you're going to spend, then all of a sudden you walk out spending a ton. But I do agree. I think that when, you know, customers get in there, they have fantastic deals, but you've only got so much to, to spread around as an as a consumer uh, because you, everything's been squeezed. I mean, uh, wage, wages are not keeping up with inflation, so everybody's feeling the, the pinch a little bit. Uh, and even though you do get fantastic deals at Costco, I think you are less likely uh, to go in and buy something that you didn't want. What I think you're more likely to do is to go in and buy something that you had your eye on and buy more of that thing. Uh, we're seeing that people talking about, like I mentioned, bulk buying is up significantly, as is deal discovery. So um, if you're able to find something that you, you needed, you're going to buy a lot of it. And if you maybe if you're not sure if you needed it, uh, maybe you'll go ahead and grab it, but probably less so than you would have, uh, you know, a year ago or so, just to your point there, Tom. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, gas, they said that contributed a lot when gas prices were going above five bucks a, a gallon, that people were coming to get gas and stopping in the store. Now oil's down under 75 bucks a barrel right now. So gas price is coming down too. Maybe that's affecting. But uh, Landon, real quick, your, your uh, earnings score was minus nearly 20? Yeah, it's just it's at negative 15, which is right on the edge of maybe doing a bearish trade. Um, that does not take into account the November release and the 10% move over the last week. So uh, I might I might go a little bit more towards neutral there. But if you made me pick, I'd lean bearish. Lean bearish. All right, great stuff as always, Landon. Appreciate it. All right, thanks, guys. Have a good day. Yep, you too. That's Landon Swan, the co-founder of Likefolio, helping us break down the data on Costco. Kevin, with that.